This is still news desk. We can now move on to another issue. We'll talk about Guinea-Bissau as it makes frantic efforts to rebuild its nation after several coup d'etats in that country. Now, you recall that uh, uh, you may have seen right here on Joy News that Guinea-Bissau is seeking financial assistance from Ghana and the entire sub-region uh, to help develop its country as it just returns to democratic rule. Now, I want to, we want to find out what uh, the country looks like right now uh, after returning or because it's, it's, it's just recovering from a, a state of uh, uncertainty and instability. And then we'll look at what sort of help ECOWAS could give it. Is ECOWAS in the position to offer any help to Guinea-Bissau right now in the face of Ebola and so, um, so many uh, instability, pockets of instability across the sub-region? Irbad Ibrahim is an international news and security analyst. He's joined me over the telephone. Irbad. Good morning. Good morning to you. Let's start off with, with a brief o overview of where Guinea-Bissau started from and where it is now. Yeah, I think Christmas is only two months away. I wish Ghana could ask us for the Christmas. We just had some chromatic instability. And uh, when President Kamp made the Kuturi sought help, and we could dole out some 10 million pounds in assistance to Guinea-Conakry. But I think this current appeal from Guinea-Bissau uh, is coming at the wrong time. Uh, so therefore, I think we don't have the wherewithal uh, to please off uh, such huge amounts of money any longer. Mm. Uh, President right. said that uh, right. you know, yeah. I have just been prompted that we're having terrible feedback from you. But because of that, our viewers cannot hear you. And so guess what we're going to do? We're going to raise you over the telephone again after we, we hang up on this particular call and have that conversation just in a bit. But here's what you should know. Earlier, uh, Prime Minister for Guinea-Bissau, Domingo Simeon Pereira, was in Ghana, and he was hosted by Vice President Parkwisi Emisa Asa. Join you, source there. Take a look. The last time Prime Minister Domingo Pereira was in Ghana was to seek financial support after a successful democratic election ended with a severely battered economy. Civil servants had not been paid for months, and by their own account, organization of a fitting inaugural ceremony was tough. Following bilateral talks at Akonsombo on his first visit to Ghana after the inauguration, Prime Minister Pereira announced a roundtable meeting to be hosted in Ghana as part of efforts to revive Guinea-Bissau's economy. He expressed gratitude to President John Mahama for his role in securing support for Guinea-Bissau, sharing optimism for further support under his ECOWAS leadership. Uh, we still have a lot of challenges to face and we're looking forward to do it having the support of the COAS. So we are preparing a round table for uh, next year in February. And I just express His Excellency our interest of having the support of ECOAS, but specifically the Ghanaian support to have a preparation meeting uh, sometimes later, maybe in January here in, in, in Ghana. I asked him the kind of support his country is expecting from Ghana. The most expressive one would be the financial one. Uh, I can tell you that during transitional period, there are times that we are not able even to pay the salaries, and that came from the ECOWAS countries. But not only that, uh, last uh, month in September, we were in, at the General Assembly of the United Nations. Uh, the International Group for Guinea-Bissau got together under the auspices of the ECOWAS. And that was led by your Minister of Foreign Affairs, who really did a wonderful job in Lisbon in getting all these stakeholders to pay attention to the situation in Guinea-Bissau. Vice President Kwesi Bekoye, Mr. Arthur, said talks on specific areas in which Ghana can support are still ongoing. We know that they have a number of challenges in their country, trying to create democracy, stability. They want to reorganize their economy and do um, and reduce poverty. So we've had some discussion and we'll continue in the spirit of ECOWAS and African Brotherhood to provide as much support as we can to the government and people of Guinea-Bissau. 
Prime Minister Thank Pereira you. said his government is now putting together what he describes as a consensus government based on open dialogue. He was accompanied by his female defense minister, minister in charge of foreign affairs, among other high-ranking officials. Elrod Ibrahim is an international news analyst and he's joined us again. Elrod, thank you very much for your patience. Welcome. Come in. How far has Guinea Bissau come as a nation? It has a quite checkered history. Mm. The past 40 years since gaining independence from Portugal, we've gone through a series of coup d'etats and that is coming straight. And the latest coup d'etat we saw was in April 2004. And Germany, I think the current group of leaders need help from those efforts in the larger international community, especially as the country's president, Bas, has granted amnesty to those who protested the coup in April 2004, mm. including the ring leader, Pansal Chama. So if these leaders have made such concessions for the sake of national cohesion, then they deserve the trust and financial assistance of the international community at such a critical moment that civil servants have not been paid for too many months. Mm. And this distress call needs an urgent response before the country relapses into chaos. And mind you, Kemeni, only in July this year, when President Mahama convened uh, a conference of the heads of state within the sub-region, a special emergency fund for Guinea Bissau was set up. And the president was so optimistic about the initiative that he projected that there would be a donor conference this month. And uh, this is the seventh day of the month of August. Mm -hmm. of, of October? Of October, sorry. And I don't think we'll be able to convene such a conference. So therefore, uh, the, the insidious spread of Ebola in the sub region has completely uh, changed FOS's calculus. Mm. And the emergency fund issue has been pushed to the back banner. So as things stand right now, those severally and collectively, I think Ghana and FOS can do very little. But Ebola, even though it's so important, we are talking democracy and instability, potential instability. And we hope for the best, but this is not the right time for Ghana to be by the Christmas to Guinea, just as the former war, uh, mm. to the other Guinea country when the tourists got help in the 90s. But, but, but Guinea-Bissau, as a member of ECOWAS, also means that ECOWAS is obliged to offer some help in times of distress. Uh, how do we reconcile the two? The fact that ECOWAS may be uh, a bit resource-trapped, and the fact that it's, it's, it's obliged to also help out Guinea-Bissau to visit distress. Oh, the obligation is there, constitutionally speaking, and based on the protocols of ECOWAS. But the place of ECOWAS is poor, Kemeni. I think the coup in Guinea Bissau took place in tandem with the other one in Mali in 2004. But because Mali was um, a colony of the French in the past, the French specifically deployed in January 2003. And Mali is doing just fine. But Guinea Bissau was not colonized by the French, it was colonized by the Portuguese. Mm. And the Portuguese currently are also facing their own uh, credit crunch. So there is no savior. That is why I think uh, Prime Minister Ferreira has prevented uh, potential help coming from Western donors uh, to come up in hand uh, mm. to Vice President Emisa uh, the Asma. So what are the alternatives that exist for Guinea-Bissau? Because we wouldn't want it to relapse. You are right. And I think we've said time and again that if you don't have a standing central bank, those at the sub-regional level and the continental level, and you can't just dip your hand uh, into a non-existent offer uh, to dole out money to a country in distress like Guinea Bissau. So uh, they are up against a very difficult situation. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy we had some soothing words to placate them. But beyond the rhetoric, I think there is very little those Ghana and the airport sub-region can do to build them out. And in P, they say, if a patriarch says he will give you 12, an uh, act of the person's name. And that, uh, that has been given this distress for it's also begging the IMF to bail us out. That's why I keep rehashing the point that the timing is wrong. We couldn't make uh, economic prudence uh, for Ghana to, you know, give a chunk of the money built at this uh, national level or a level to uh, a country like this.